everybody what's up and welcome back so today I have for you a case of Nancy Lee Eagleson and she so I discovered this case when I was on Facebook actually and I'm a part of a few part of a few you know true crime groups it's just a few we'll just say just a few and um, this case caught my eye because the family really wants it to be solved and this is more of a vintage crime case. And I just, I feel really bad for her family. And I will also leave the link for the GoFundMe page that is associated with this case to help give more coverage when it comes to this case. Um, if you're new here, hey, what's up? My name is Liz and this is Creating Crime Time where I'm your host. Yeah. So if you're new here, uh, thank you and I hope you enjoy all the content here on my channel. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Um, everybody, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, turn your bell notification on to all, and let's jump into today's true crime case. Wow. Well, that was fun. I swear. Oh, like my cute little mug. I found it in the dollar spot at Target. It was a two stack. The other one is black and has stars all over it. It was for Christmas. Although the day after, not to sound like that mom, that mom, but um, the day after I went, they were all gone. So. Anywho. All right. So Nancy Lee Eagleson. So Nancy was born in 1946 and she would tragically pass away on the 13th of November of 1960. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to go into a backstory about her because her, part of her family is still living. Um, I'm more or less just going to talk about the case in itself and what I read about when I discovered this case. So the day of the crime, Nancy and her Aunt Mary went to church like normal, just went on with their day. Later on, Nancy and her sister, Cheryl, uh, Cheryl was five at the time, they left the house around two because they wanted to go see, they wanted to go to the theater. At around 6 p.m., they stopped at a local restaurant for some sodas and just for like an after, after the show, kind of like a, a treat. So they would be there and then around 7.30 p.m. is when they would start making their way back home. Well, on their journey back home is when they noticed that a vehicle was following them. And eventually that same vehicle would like pull over and then ask if they needed a ride and Nancy being that older sister just politely said no said no thank you and that they were almost home well they were like four to five houses away from being home when this guy pulled over well the man didn't like it he then pulled Nancy into the car and at this time, Cheryl then decided to jump on him to try and, like, get him to stop. Stop trying to shove his her sister in the backseat of the car. Well, it didn't work. He ended up being able to get Cheryl off of his back. And at this point, Cheryl is, like, stricken with fear and terror that, oh, my God, somebody's stealing my sister that she's just frozen and just watches this man take off with her sister. She, I later, I saw that Cheryl felt like something was off and she just, she had this gut feeling something was wrong and that she was too late. And that's when she she saw him drive off with her sister. So Cheryl, she then ran to a neighbor's house 
and this neighbor's name is Betty Larson and she just kept saying that a man took her sister a man took Nancy like a man kidnapped Nancy like so and she would also go to say that Cheryl that she watched helplessly as he sped off with Nancy and so all that was left behind at the crime scene was Nancy's purse and a search started almost immediately after she was taken. Unfortunately, she it would be about five hours until they would be able to find her. And you know when you when you read about a case and then you get to like the worst part about it when you find out what actually happened, I felt like you know when that feeling in your gut, when something drops and you're just like stunned? That's what I felt when I read this. So around 1 a.m. Nancy's body would be discovered by two raccoon hunters. Um, man, it's so sad. So Nancy had been sexually assaulted and then shot in the chin with a small caliber weapon and that exited from her eye. Her clothes were intact except for her undergarments. Her undergarments were a few feet from her body. Her body was found seven miles away from her home in a wooded area that was about a hundred feet from the road. So what they found there was a bullet, a bullet fragment from her skull. There was semen present. Um, her fingernails were cut and high heeled shoes were present and um, they found hair on a tree branch nearby. So as of today, this case remains unsolved and her family member um, name is Meryl Miller is raising funds to exhume her body. Now they need to exhume her body because there is biological DNA that they could extract from her body, what could possibly be left. And the reason being is because all of the evidence that was found is lost. Over the years, it just went missing. Like everything else, everything else, when it comes to evidence that is found, just magically goes missing. So, and this is even after the fact that the family was told that the DNA was preserved. That they, it was preserved to hopefully test it later on, but everything was lost. Oh, this case has been unsolved for 61 years, and it's time that this case needs to be solved. This case was also featured on the show's uh, the show Portals of Hell with Jack Osborne and Katrina Weedman, and they covered this case to try and solve it, and they were unsuccessful. There is speculation that her kidnapping and murder is related to that of Gloria Kowalowicz, and her murder happened in 1960, literally the day before Nancy's. So Nancy died on the 13th of November and Gloria died on the 12th of November. So they believe that it's, they believe that they were killed by the same, that their, their cases are related. We'll just say that. So yeah, that is the case of Nancy Eagleson. I, I really hope that a lot more cold cases are able to be solved. I have noticed an uptick in cold cases that police are working on because of the technology that we have now versus what they had then. So, um, anywho, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to look in the description box. I do, I will have that link for the GoFundMe page. I find I, it's really important that this case gets solved. So anything will help and just follow the link, share the link on your and any social media to help get Nancy's case out there. So I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys in my next true crime case. Bye guys. Oh.